Hi, thanks for joining me with Dyslexia Solutions. I have had a passion to help people in prison for as long as I can remember, um, probably 25 years or longer. And as I've been in education, I'm seeing the illiteracy problems in our schools and kids dropping out of high school, going to prison, going into gangs and going into crime. So I do have a passion to help with illiteracy in the schools and in prison. And I have a new friend named Casey Diaz, who has a new book. It's called um, The Shot Caller. And this book is going to go into the prisons in Los Angeles to let the inmates know about his transformation. He had a come to Jesus moment. And I'm going to be talking about that soon on my other YouTube channel called After the Cross Ministries. I don't know if you know I have that but it would be interesting to listen to that. But um, Casey talks about his book. He talks about teachers who impacted his life in different ways. I wanna share with you a little bit about the shot color. So Casey came from El Salvador and his grandfather was murdered. The, the grandmother and grandfather were murdered in front of his dad. So you can only imagine the kind of issues his dad grew up with. And Casey's dad um, was very abusive to his mother and to him. So they lived in Los Angeles and Casey writes about shoplifting with his friends and um, doing things that we see some of our middle schoolers do or our at-risk kids. And um, he talks about seeing people murdered from his apartment complex. So what this does to a child and then expecting the child to function in the classroom, we have our hands full and we have to be so tenderhearted to help these, these kids and have compassion. So Casey talks about a teacher who brought cupcakes to the school or English, English muffins to school and wouldn't give him an English muffin and, and told him, you don't get one. You know, because he was a victim of seeing abuse in his home. And he had another teacher when he was in third grade who planned a field trip. And first they were going to do have pen pals. So imagine being in a low-income district in Los Angeles, California, having a pen pal in Malibu, the beach area in California. That's one different thing. But then to have a field trip to go to meet those people and everybody was supposed to bring kites, but Casey didn't even know what a kite was. So he didn't bring a kite and he met his pen pal and the meeting was fine, but it was a very embarrassing time to be together with other kids who had kites and he didn't have a kite. I mean, who does that? Who sets a kid up for embarrassment and failure? Stop it, stop it, stop it. I. I just can shake some of these teachers because don't you know what you're doing? Don't you know what you're doing when you have your dyslexic child read in a classroom and he doesn't know how to read? You need to prime that student. Let the student know you're gonna be reading this paragraph tomorrow or Friday. Let them practice it. We don't wanna humiliate our students. And when this, when the teacher asks a question and you put some options of what the um, what the answers could be on the board, give the whole class processing time so that when you call on that dyslexic child, they're not going to answer a question that's already been answered, and they can answer a question with the right answer. So give them processing time. We have to really work in our classrooms not to humiliate and embarrass these dyslexic children. So um, I met a psychologist this last weekend when we went camping and he recently retired and he was just talking about the stress that's on the school psychologist right now. And I agree. When I left the school district in 2018, the psychologist was the one who was supposed to be working with the diagnosis of dyslexia. Well, their plates are so full with other um, issues that aren't dyslexia, but they're not, they weren't trained to screen for dyslexia. Now, dyslexia impacts general ed kids 
as well as special ed kids. 85% of kids in special ed under specific learning disability eligibility have dyslexia. Now, that's a lot of ability ability. But we have um, you know, specific learning disability, we have emotional, we have uh, um, intellectual disability. So those that have specific learning disability, typically processing disorder or you know, delayed processing, comprehension processing uh, delays, 85% of those kids have dyslexia. So it can be treated, it can be simply um, identified with a pre-screen. If you go to my Teachers Pay Teachers store under Orton Gillingham, Marianne, Dr. Marianne Sintron, Dyslexia Solutions, I have some pre-screens there that you can download and pre-screen kids. So dyslexia impacts one in five kids. So if you see it in five year students, have a pull out circle and, and teach these kids with phonogram cards, with sound circles, teach them with uh, the reading processes that I have, auditory and visual discrimination. You can buy individual books on Teachers Pay Teachers, but I'm having a special discount right now if you buy them from me, from my website. So um, the psychologist didn't know what to do to help dyslexic children. And now we're hearing that the speech pathologists are having a lot of that responsibility. And when I left the public school system in 2018, it actually was given over to the assistant principal who didn't give a hoot about what was going on with dyslexia. You know, there's a lot that kid that there, there's a lot going on in the schools. And we had kids that were acting out. We had um, the emotionally disturbed kids were released from that emotionally disturbed school and put onto the school site where we were teaching the other kids. So we had a mingling of personalities. So there were fights breaking out on campus. We had security that were around the campus and they were very active. We had, um, I remember one school I worked at, we actually had a student that had a an ankle bracelet or an ankle warning um, because he had been carrying a knife and that we just want, they paid attention to him at school, but he was in probation camp. And so, you know, the schools have a lot going on right now. So um, anyway, dyslexia was not addressed. And right now our governor is promising some more money to early assess dyslexia. A couple of years ago, he promised money to assess for dyslexia in the at-risk schools. So what about the non-at-risk schools? So that's why I've been reaching out and, and tutoring from my home so I could help kids from the non-at-risk areas because people with money still have dyslexic children. It's not a respecter of people. So I just wanted to share that there was a time when um, as a dyslexia specialist, I wondered if I should go into speech. And oh my gosh, I took a look at that. I had one course at Cal State Dominguez Hills, and that was like a nursing class. And then I remember speaking to someone about maybe I should go into psych school psychology, which is kind of where I started, but I didn't end up there. But school psychology always interest me. And um, I had people tell me that school psychologists were just not having enough work. So they were going back into the classroom to be teachers. So, oh my gosh, how things have flipped. The um, person that I met camping said, now there's a great need for school psychologists and there's a great need for teachers. So um, anyway, I have a vision to, to train 20,000 teachers and I have a vision to help 300,000 students. How's that gonna be done? Well, the plan we have is to write some grants and to write some small grants so that I could do some Google marketing and Facebook marketing. Now, Google won't allow me to advertise my product, but I could talk about the learning difference that we have in our brain. And I can talk about the music we use in the left ear and the spelling exercise. Well, I can't talk about my product. So that's the one challenge. But I have a person who's already, um, she's looked at some of my um, good videos that would be testimonials that will be great for some promotions. And 
I need a grant to pay her, but I also need a grant to get the Facebook advertising and the other advertising. So any, any purchase you make of my curriculum, a portion of that is being set aside to help with the promotion and with the marketing of this curriculum. That's how we're gonna get this accomplished. If you have compassion for what I'm doing, become a partner, uh, make some donations to our website. Any amount will help because your donation is gonna to help towards the marketing. And I wanna go worldwide with this. And we have a product that's gonna help um, transform lives. Teachers are being trained and they're gonna transform lives. As long as they have tenure, their skill is not gonna change. And these students, we're gonna keep them out of prison, get them out of prison if they're there. So again, back to my friend Casey's book. It's Casey Diaz and his book is called The Shot Caller. I could only read portions of this. I really had to skip through it because I'm not familiar with gangs. I'm not familiar with the prison system. So he goes into a lot of detail because he's getting this in the hands of inmates right now. As we speak, it's being printed and put in the hands of inmates. So you can actually donate to him as well. Just Google Casey Diaz and make donations towards his books and help get that book in the prisons. My book, it's called um, uh, Prisms of Brilliance, No Dyslexia Here. Did you know that statistically we have 85% um, of kids in special ed have dyslexia, 88% of the juveniles in the juvenile court system have dyslexia, and then 66.9% of people in prisons have dyslexia. Come on, or they can't, they say they can't read. Well, when you can't read, when you can't put sounds together, when you can't read a sentence, it's called dyslexia, unless you've had some major brain injury. So we have a huge illiteracy problem in our prisons and our nation around the world. Let's tackle this. Will you partner with me? Go to my website, dyslexia-solutions.com. You can even go to dys-sol.com and buy the curriculum for a friend, buy it for your school psychologist or a teacher. I just had someone buy this from New Mexico who has her own private practice and she's a teacher. So there's many ways you can partner and I really hope you do. Please like if you haven't already and subscribe and until next week, talk soon. Bye-bye now and God bless you.